Guys, before we begin this podcast, we have a massive announcement. We have a Twitch. What up? Twitch stream. Chat and JT go deep on Twitch. I think you can do twitch.tv slash chat and JT go deep. Follow the Twitch. We're going to do it Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we're going live. It's going to be like the unedited version of the podcast. And you can talk with us while you watch. We'll have a message chat up. So what you say you want us to talk about could be what we end up talking about. Crazy. Unless you say some punk shit. Yeah. But even then, maybe that's what grabs my attention. Because that inflammatory stuff is what gets noticed sometimes. That's what I'm talking about. So if you want to get the full unedited version of, of the episode that week, tune in to the Twitch on Mondays and you'll be there with us. And you can chat and say what up. What up? Also, huge event this weekend, Sunday at noon, Black Beach, San Diego, California. We are going to change the world by breaking the world record for group perineum sunning. And bro, we got to call it out. We're stressed because it looks like it might rain on Sunday. Yeah. So here's the thing about perineum sunning. Here's the thing about breaking world records. Come rain or shine, we show up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's even more powerful if we do it under a light drizzle. Absolutely. No matter what, we're going to bear our taints. And we believe in the UV power cutting through the clouds and cutting through the noise of modern society and cutting through the bullshit of elections, dude. Absolutely. Let's start the podcast. Oh, wait. Yeah. April 1st. Oh, yeah. Live special taping for Strider Wilson. Me and Chad will be there. It's an Atwater Village, a paperback brewing company. Two shows, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Come in, watch history be made by the history is dank legend strider wilson his links for the ticket links are in his instagram bio it's gonna be epic we've been watching him do this material it is so good and you're gonna want to see it live <sighs> yeah kudos and credit to chad for making those uh links happen too he was dealing with two uh total luddites and he pushed us into <laughs> something serviceable so thank him thank him big time i'm serious it's big oh thanks big Shout out to you guys for making it happen. It was scrambled eggs up until that point. All right, bros. Bro Start bros. the pod. How's your mom? Your mom's in town. My mom's in town. Yeah, she's good. Uh, dude, we had a good night. We uh, before the show, we um, she came in yesterday. We took the dog to the dog park. We ordered, I've been a big fan of Organico. Have you heard of Organico? Yeah. I love Organico. I get their stir fry. So we got some stir fry and then we watched the Imagineering documentary. You've for, watched that one before. Many times. It's very, she loves it because it's like artists collaborating to create stuff. And uh, it's the best. We're going to do it again tonight. Watch it again? No, it was, it's like six episodes. Oh, cool. Yeah, we were, we were watching episode five. And uh, I think we might backtrack. We're going to finish episode six and then maybe go up, watch episode three. I love watching stuff out of order. Yeah. How's your, how's your family? They're good. Thank you. Um, kids are good. They're cute. They're little bejubers. Just bejubing all day. And then, you know, sometimes they, they change on you. Noises that used to make them laugh now make them cry with the boy. Uh -oh. he, he, I, I do this mocking tone when he cries. And of late, it's a... Uh, making him cry now it used to make him laugh when i did it but he must he must have got hip to condescension is he's like you're making fun of me now i think he gets real sort of like why are you doing this in my moment of weakness yeah and i'm like it's a good question and Damn. then the girl she's just a bejuber of all bejubes she's just like uh rolling around and they're they're getting close to standing which is also neato and then uh, my girlfriend she's great she's the best you know, she got me drinking matcha and, and she got me making it at home because mm -hmm. she, she's on this big kick that we got to make more stuff at home. Mm. Did she? So you've been going no caffeine. I, I think that, matcha has caffeine. Right. But but for, basically no coffee. Yeah. So was that your idea? Your girlfriend's idea? It was her idea. A joint idea? I want to say joint, but it was her idea. Yeah. And how are you enjoying that? It's actually been better. She really? was right. You get less anxiety? For sure. And I'm crashing less hard and I'm less manic at night. Okay. And so do you feel like more like level headed? Yeah, probably. Do you feel happier? Uh, yeah, probably. But I don't like, I, happiness to me is like a, 
I don't even like using it as a measurement for things. I don't even yeah. like thinking of it as a concept. I think it's a right. fool's errand. Being happy? Yeah, I just don't even think... I like thinking of things like, do I feel like there's meaning in life? Do I feel purposeful? Do I have energy for life? I like right. using those words more. I think happy... If you ask someone, are they happy? They might say yes. If you really dug down into it, I'm sure there's a lot they are not satisfied about. Right. So to me, it's just a weird way to kind of summarize things. I, I think it's a, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't love it. What about joyful? Yeah, I like joyful. So happy, you think of happy as sort of like a, a weird contentment area, but you think of happy as like someone's whole being. If someone were to say they're happy, they're, you'd say that their whole being is happy. And you don't think that's possible. I don't know. It's just like, a, it stresses me out. Right. It makes me unhappy to think about happiness. Okay. Gotcha. Like, I think if, if you're asking yourself, am I happy? Right. You're probably not happy. Right. Now I'm just kind of thinking of it as like, conceptually. I think joyful is a better word. I like that more for sure. Because if you're joyful, if you're feeling like inspired, you're feeling like you have like a love for life, that feels more joyful than, uh, yeah. No, I'm getting tripped up on it. Or like, am I, like you'd be like, am I laughing a lot? Like I've yeah. been laughing a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good measurement. Yeah. I don't even know what happy looks like. Right. Like I, I get angry a lot. I have yeah. a lot of... Uh, like combativeness in me yeah does that mean i'm unhappy i don't think so right but i think people would say that's unhappy behavior and then i would yeah. say what's happy about putting me in a box that feels very unhappy to me right to constrict what my uh emotional expression is that feels fucking lame to me right see this me getting up like that yeah that made me joyful that made you joyful yeah so you like the the, the reactivity you, oh. you like being reactive. I do. To stimuli. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <man>. I do. <laughs> you know, so, when, it, when it's, yeah. So if I were to say, um, not drinking coffee is for bitches. I like that. <laughs> I don't like it, but I like that you said it. Right. So you, you, like, you like energy. Yes. You like energy. And I like, if that's the truth, do you really feel that way? Right. Don't drink coffee. No, I think it's actually very strong and something I'm unable to do. Well, you know what? I like it both ways. Yeah. I like it if it's what you really mean. And I also kind of like it. Well, yeah, no. coffee's got its, I, it's got its, it's got its hooks on you. I think, I think being able to not drink coffee seems like such a uh, foreign concept to me now. You, you know what it is, dude? It's, I've been taking a lot of naps during the day. I'm just okay with being tired. Right. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like. I don't like. Then don't, don't drink coffee. You don't really have many vices. No, no, no. I, I'm saying I, 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 I don't like taking naps. Oh, you're like Bert Murnthal that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, uh, my girlfriend's able to sleep a lot. She, she's able to take huge naps. I take a nap for more than thirty minutes. I freak out. I'll wake up. I'll be like, I'll, I, it, uh, you know, I you get ever, that. Have you ever taken a nap where you get so deep in sleep where it's like an hour, and you wake up and you're like. Where am I? What did I miss? It's disorienting. Yeah. It's, uh, you're like, is it the next day? Like, and it's, it's like day to night. You don't know if it's four in the morning, four in the afternoon. It's, it yeah. just kind of throws you. I do like power naps. That's always nice. If you get like 20 minutes where you're like, did I just sleep there? That's awesome. Um, what do you guys, how, so who we got in the chat? Getting my DS makes you happy. Good for you, Eli. Getting a blowy? See, that never worked for me. That doesn't make you happy. No. Well, I think, I think, I think the, I felt like I accomplished something. I think the acquirement of the bust makes, definitely makes me less joyful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, you once you're I've, unhappy when you come. Once I've excreted the skeet, then I'm like, oh, why did I do that? You're funny that way. Like yeah. the things you're, I think you're typically so full of meaning purpose and joy that things that other people do to get there actually send you the other way so like you're like yeah you're like unhappy when you bust yeah you don't you're kind of unhappy when you do drugs like you you prefer 
Yeah. Not to label you, but you prefer to like uh the 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 I think it's the anticipation. Yeah, that's uh, your favorite part. Yeah, I uh, even even like I think the uh the anticipation of uh well, I guess it's like when you're thinking of like the sexual conquest or whatever. You're like that's awesome. When Good. you're thinking of like doing a fat bust into inside of a you know, a nice my girlfriend. This is well said. Uh you know, yeah. <laughs> uh I um but you know, I guess uh, connecting with my girlfriend does make me happy. So, I guess I was thinking more of like the hookup where you're you're like, especially when you're like single, I need a hook up. And then the, the next day you're sort of like, oh, you know, it's, 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 it, I, no, I hear you. There was something, uh, meaningless about it for me. There were some times where it was awesome though. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, I mean, look, yeah. Yeah. Well, cause what I mean is, is that what like it? Yeah. That's what it happens. Well, because when I was young too, mm -hmm. before I ever did it, it's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want to forget that. So anytime yeah. I do it, I want to be grateful that it happened. Right. Interesting. I'm letting the dogs loose, eh? This is kind of making me happy. Uh, want to take a call? Yeah, I think we need that. All right, cool. We're in loopy loop land. Let's do it. Population, me and my dog. Um... Dude, Mom Lem's in here. What up, Mom Lem? Mom Lem, I think might be the most devoted, like live streamer commenter across all platforms too. Yeah, dude. Yeah, good point, Ian Plachy. Knowing you're gonna rage fires you up. It fires like the anticipation of the party fires me up more than the party. I would say when I was in college. Can you hear? Hello. Us? There he is. Hello. What up, dude? Hey, what's <laughs> up, man? Oh, dude. <laughs> my dog how we doing good man how are you dude i'm doing really good i'm fired up right now dude fired up on you what's your name friend or do you want to stay anon what'd you say there what's your name or do you want to stay anon dude i'll say my name my name's ian um so... a lot of my boys watch the pod with my girl my girlfriend doesn't watch it but he's fired up and i like it so oh, oh that's yeah. nice are you ian in the <laughs> chat yeah, dude, that's me. Oh, you're the fat barrels guy. Dude, you know, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm in uh, Del Mar right now with my, I live in San Diego, but my uh, my mom's in, in Del Mar right now at this dank house. Sweet. So I'm going to go out in, a, in like an hour or two to go shred some waves, dude. I'm stoked. Nice. Sweet. So what's going on, yeah. brother? Well, dude, I uh, when I first called you guys for a beef, it was uh, it was over my boss because mm. he was being a total d bag. But look, I got fired, so like that's not really a beef anymore. <laughs> oh. You got fired. Yeah, but like it's. I mean, you know, nineteen. I mean, I'm in college, so like it's not a big deal. But um, but that's like kind of my my the like why I called you guys in the beginning. But now it's just like I'll chat it up with Chad and JT. You know what I'm saying? Wait. So what was our advice and what was the uh, first issue. Well, so well, I didn't call you guys before. I just uh, like I called in to see if you guys would answer, and that's what, uh, what my beef was. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but since then, it's it's been it's been pretty much handled. But yeah, my boss was just being kind of a schmoll, and it was a uh, it was an ish. But now you know it's not really much of an issue anymore. You know what I'm saying? What was he doing? Well, so I mean, it's kind of it's it's kind of comp. I don't know. So I work I I worked at a fish store. <laughs> like uh, aquarium fish uh -huh. and uh it's uh it's something i've been liking to like I, i've been uh been enjoying for a few years now it's kind of it fires me up so I, I just moved down here and got this job at this new fish store and then this guy was just kind of like not letting me i don't know it's hard to explain he wasn't letting me do what i want to do and he would like he would like blow up on me for the littlest thing and I just be like, listen, man, I'm here to, I'm here to help you, dude. I'm not here to mess anything up. And then he later to me. So oh. I don't know if it was just me or, you know what I mean? Is that, is that common in the fish store industry? <laughs> Honestly, dude, it's, it's strange. It's a, 
it's a really uh, particular community, man. People are really entitled. You'd be surprised. So yeah, it is kind of common, you know. What and what, what was he entitled about? So so like basically he's a he knows like freshwater fish. He's all into like the corals and stuff like that. Mm. And then your boy is about like the freshwater with like when it comes to like you know plants and things like that. Like I I love I love plants, dude. I love plants. Mm. So. <laughs> So when I would uh, give him suggestions on stuff to do with like fresh water, which he didn't know anything about, he'd be all pissed and like, you know, we need to save money or whatever. But I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just giving him suggestions of from, from my expertise. So it's, he doesn't have expertise and he would just later it. So it's kind of an ideological clash. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a, a power struggle on us. Mm. And did you end up... Uh... When you guys would have your disagreements, would he raise his voice? Um, he wouldn't necessarily raise. I mean, it's funny because like when he texts me, he'd like he shoot me with all caps. <laughs> but like in person, he'd be like pretty nonchalant. So, and also like the big thing is too is I had this other worker there that was a little higher up than me, and he, apparently the boss would talk hella shit about me to this guy. And then this guy would be like, yo, Patrick said this about you, dude. Again, Whoa. I'd be like, Ugh. dude, I mean, you know, one of the 48 laws of power is never outshine the master. You may have outshone dude. your master, dude. Dude. That's so true. Yeah. You were that's like crazy. one of those lantern fish. Yeah. And you, oh. you were shining too bright. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, and a big old shark found me and just got my ass. Well, he saw a bigger shark and, you know, and he ate you. Well, he saw a potentially bigger shark. Maybe you were a juvenile shark, like a juvenile tiger, just roaming the seas of the Pacific Ocean. And then he's like, mm -hmm. dude, that guy is going to grow up and he's going to eat me, so I better eat him first. So what I think you should do is you should start your own fish store with an emphasis on freshwater plants and Dude, let's go. And like Andy Elliott says, bankrupt his ass. <laughs> Dude, great call. Yeah. I love that. Is there a oh, part yeah, of you yeah. too that feels like maybe he was right? Because I've honestly Dude, never so, heard of anyone who's into freshwater plants and aquariums. Yeah, that's funny because I get that a lot. You know, <laughs> it's a it's a pretty small community, but like. I don't know. I, I got into it like a few years ago in high school and I've just been loving it since. So like I'm starting to get into like environmental science and stuff like that for my major because I just love the plant science. Um, but when you're, you're to your question, uh, I mean, probably I don't, I'm not much of a business uh, genius and it was kind of a startup. So, you know, a few of my suggestions may have been a little bit outlandish. Um, but the thing is, you know, there are suggestions, right? So I'm over here, like, trying to think of cool things to do. And he, you know, he wouldn't only just turn me down. He'd tell me, like, listen, man, you're out of your place. It's like, you're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to fire off ideas for the, for the store. You know what I'm saying? What's, a, what's, a, what's your favorite freshwater plant? Dude, great call. Um, Oh, dude. Um, well, I don't know. I, I would probably go with, uh, if you guys want to shoot up a, look up a picture of what Jungle Val looks like. I fuck with Jungle Val. It's pretty cool looking. So you'd hit your boss with things like, why are we selling goldfish when we could be selling Jungle Val? Dude, exactly. Yeah, that's fine. And he's too. all like, I'm just kidding. Dude. Well, I, I do, but like at a certain point, you'd be like, "Hey, enough about the jungle now." Yeah, I was just joking, there, dude. And, and also, like, I, I just... nah, man, our store needs jungle vowels, dude. Yeah. Listen, we could have a whole row of jungle vowels instead of these, <laughs> these clownfish. Did he ever try any of your ideas? Any of them? What'd you say? Did he ever try any of your ideas? He did. Uh, well, yeah, he would try them when um, there was more people on my side. You know, like if I were to bring something up, you know, by myself, he'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, he kind of shoot me down. And then but if I talked to like like this other guy I was talking about before, I'd be like, yo, he's got, his name was Manny. I'd be like, yo, Manny, don't you think this is cool? And he'd be like, yeah, that's cool. And then we'd both go up to him and he'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. 
So I don't know. I mean, I'm 19, man. I'm I'm a, I'm just like some blonde white idiot. So he probably was just like, this kid doesn't know anything about like business. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. You know, maybe I was a little out of my place, but <laughs> go ahead. It seems you know. like yeah, it seems like you're a dreamer, you're an idealist, you're young and I feel like when people come at you with a ton of ideas, you're sort of like you know, you might be a little bit like, All right, shut up. Like we're here to sell oh, yeah. a fish. Um, totally did. So, <laughs> when you're like, bro, <laughs> why are we? Why don't we get rid of beta fish and angelfish and just sell jungle val? <laughs> you're like, dude, that's gonna put a serious dent in my fish market margins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what I was just thinking. Is yeah, like, think... the jungle val doesn't look like it's gonna make you much money back. Yeah. It didn't... <laughs> Yeah. It's just yeah. grass, dude. Yeah. I mean, that costs about fifty cents to get, and you sell it for about fifty-one cents. Um, well, and that, Bro, you're killing me, dude. That is hilarious. And so, when he did try the ideas that you and Manny both uh, supported, did they work? Hell yeah, they did, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe yeah that. that's the thing. Like. I'm a, I'm a personal guy. Like, like, and so is the business. Like I get customers in there that would come in like multiple times a week and we'd be like, you know, I would know everything about what's going on with them. And I would, you know, and same oh, with the cool. store I worked at previously, it's like, I'd have all these customers. And then, um, so like when, when, when new things would be added and they'd ask me about it, I'm like, yeah, dude, that was me. You know, I just thought that'd be a good, I don't know, man. I think I, I think you took a big L by later in me, bro. Yeah, it sounds like you're an asset. <laughs> it sounds like lots of talented young, uh, you know, employees, athletes, studs, whatever. You know, you need to rein it in a little bit, but you also understand that there's that you have a gift and you want people to see it. Yeah, yeah, you know, just uh, like Icarus, bro. Flew co- flew too close to the sun, dude. Yeah, stay in the water, brother. What uh, What did he say when he fired you? Dude, great question. Um, so I was crushing in and out before my before my my shift, and he told me to come in like half an hour early. So I pulled up, and he's like, "Listen, man, uh, we're gonna have to let you go." And he told me um, uh, that I was uh, that I had gone rogue. <laughs> 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 This guy. I want to. We should call this guy. I kind of want to call. Dude, him. I know, bro. What's He's the what's small. the what's the store called? Hold on, hold on. Dude, it's, oh, I'm totally calling it out. It's uh, Aquarium Fish Depot in San Diego. All right. Dude, uh, it's a great location. It's got it's got a it's got a lot of good stuff. If you're into the fish market, dude, all my stokers hit it up. Yeah, get some um, jungle. Wait, so why did he say you went rogue? Um, so he, so there were, there was a bunch of issues about, um, what I would do to the fish that are in the store. So, you know, fish get sick, fish, you know, there's all sorts of things that need to be, uh, done to the tanks for the fish to be safe. And like, um, I would like medicate them and stuff like that. And he would not like that. So at one point I medicated these fish and then a couple of them ended up dying because they were sick. Obviously that's why I medicated them. And then he's like, yeah, dude, this loss of fish is too much. We're going to have to let you go. That was kind of like the, the, the straw on the camel's back, I think, is the, the phrase. You well, know think, what I mean? Yeah, I think that's an interesting, ambiguous place to leave the conversation and to leave the listener. But we appreciate you calling in, man. Thank you. Yeah, dude, hey, I appreciate the time, man. You guys are awesome. Dude, you're the man. Uh, for, oh, for the record, I would buy Jungle Val from him. I think he could sell me on it. He's an interesting guy. Jungle Val. It does look beautiful. Yeah. Look at it just flowing in the water there. Yeah, it's pretty. But like a whole aquarium of just that? No fish? The Jungle Val store? It's kind of interesting, I guess. I just never heard of it until he floated it. Well, I, yeah, I was like, I, I was, he's like freshwater plants. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I mean, people put like rocks and some like little grass patches in there, but yeah. it's it's not really the point of it. I was I was thinking about I was at Petco the other day and I was I saw like they had aquariums and it'd be like a replica of like SpongeBob's house. You can put that in your tank. Is like your fish can. Ro- Do you think the fish is like, dude? This is like SpongeBob's house. This is sick. That'd be cool. Yeah. 
oh, dude, uh, I, I've never watched SpongeBob, so yeah. my references are going to be off. But like, oh, hey, it's Handsome Squidward. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, who's Handsome Squidward again? Isn't that one of the characters on SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah, but that someone used that as like an insult. I think they do it to dudes when they get their like jaws done or something. Oh, that's a yeah, 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 yeah. Handsome <laughs> Squid. Yeah, um, Squidward's like the curmudgeon. He's oh. like the Joe of SpongeBob. Like, nice. Yeah. Ah, oh, so he's probably being grumpy to some fish. Yeah. SpongeBob. SpongeBob's like a. This is just like a childlike guy who's always feeling good and he's just going through life and i forget the name like plant uh plank and i don't know next caller no but uh, but but i'm curious like what why is that why spongebob was such a hit uh because of his character i think um or just overall what made it so appealing to people it's a good question i think it was i think part of it was his appeal was his childlike naivete and he's like a happy-go-lucky sponge, oh, that's making fun. making Krabby Patties, and uh, you know he just anything life threw at him, he was able to kind of like, as far as I can remember, go through it with like a happy-go-lucky attitude. That makes sense. I'm glad that's what kids were into. Yeah, because Ren and Stimpy was kind of way different. I never watched Ren and Stimpy. Did, did you watch that? A little bit. It was like aggressive slapstick. Oh, interesting. You know what was an interesting show is Doug. Yeah, because it was kind of sad. Yeah. It was. Even the animation was sad. There was a heaviness, like a droop to their faces that yeah. was like, oh, these kids have seen a lot of rain. Yeah. Did Recess? You watch Recess? I did. Yeah. That was pretty badass. Yeah. The main kid had real, like, revolutionary moxie. Hey. Is this Michelle? Is this a girl? Yeah. Yeah, it's Michelle. Hey, hey. Michelle. How you doing? Good. This is Chad and JT. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Good. Hanging. Are you Mom Lem by chance? I am. Whoa! We're talking to Mom <laughs> Lem? Oh my God. Oh. Wow. It's an I'm honor. Oh, I'm excited to talk to y'all too. <laughs> wow. Y'all, where are you from? I'm from Virginia. Nice. That's Charleston? Awesome. No, no, no. I'm in Virginia Beach. Ooh. Oh. How are the waves out yeah. there? Uh, they're all right. Yeah. Say hi to Alan Iverson for us. Does he live out there? Oh. He's from there. Oh. So, uh, Mom Lem, it's an honor to speak with you. Thank you for being such a huge supporter and commenter. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what ails you? So, this is a question for my sister. And she's she's older than me. She's She's 47, mm -hmm. but she doesn't, she, she's not like 47. She's like probably, she acts and looks like 10 years younger. So nice. six months ago, um, she divorced her husband and like, she, you know, like they were separated for two years. And the issue that she's having is like, there's, she has no idea where to find like good men. Mm-hmm. And any anywhere that she like looked or whatever, she kind of looked, but it's just like terrible. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And, Keep going. Oh, um, she's very successful, and um, she doesn't need anybody to support her, <laughs> and I think that scares a lot of men. And she has two kids. One's um, almost 16 and one's 18. So she doesn't, you know, she doesn't want to have any more kids. You know what? The, the hard part is, is that where you find the good men is also where you find the bad men. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the bad men look like good men and sometimes the good men look like bad men. Yeah. But you just have to keep fishing. Yeah, I I think she's like, you know, it's so new to her. Like, she went she went on the apps with like one of her friends, and it was just like it was terrible. Like, I mean, what if what if what if y'all booked a trip, 
to Harbor Island, Bahamas together, Pink Sand Beach. Mm. And you put it on the books and you guys go out there as a duo and you do the conch fritters and you have some drinks with umbrellas in them and you ride some horses and make a spectacle of yourself and see what kind of guys you can attract. And then if worse comes to worse, maybe you just gamble a little bit, be at the tables, throw down some gin and get irresponsible. And then hit a water slide in the morning. Well, so I'm I'm married, so I don't need any. I don't need to look for a guy. No, but you got. But, but, um, you, but it's fun to be a wingman. Yeah. Um. So she goes like different places on the weekend. She she was just in Costa Rica. Her um. Perfect. Her daughter is is she's she does taekwondo and yeah, more like taekwondo. Be, don't trust that stuff in a street fight. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, she's she's um on track to be in the Olympics in twenty twenty eight. Wow. I think. Wow! Oh, when it's so, in America, nice. Yeah, and my sister does taekwondo. She's done some stuff, so she's in really good shape. And you know, it's just like I think a lot of men are kind of scared to like approach her. Should she? I think maybe she should get in the dojo more and find someone, you know, a good sparring partner. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of the scene in Miss Congeniality when mm -hmm. uh, Sandra Bullock and Benjamin Bratt are sparring. I think mm -hmm. she needs to find her Benjamin Bratt. And it's going to take some, she sounds like, you know, she rips it up in the dojo. She rips it up financially. She's got mm -hmm. kids. She's crushing it. And, yeah. oh. you know, it's, it, there's not going to be a lot of dudes that can level up to her. And so yeah. I think she just has to have patience and sort through, you know, literally fight through the, the nozzles to find yeah. the golden goose. Well, well, I mean, like she's, she's like kind of looking and maybe dating a little bit and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's not, she's not dead set on like finding someone right away. So she is taking it slow, Yeah, but I mean, just, just to like see what a date would be like, you know, that's what she's like, I guess, more curious. What was the, it's been so what was the ex-husband like? He is a true narcissist. Mm, aren't we all? Well, I mean, he's, he's really bad. And I mean, I mean, sorry, not to just miss. <laughs> I mean, like, they're, so they're, they're both dentists and she is more successful than he is. Mm. And, it it basically he's taken that out on her mm -hmm. and you know it's like it it hurts his pride but you know that's what kind of happened so yeah i get it that's tough i'm sorry that she yeah. that he wasn't able to uh just be happy for her. yeah oh uh, i mean and he, i mean like he's in and out dating you know like like continuously and so you know she's just like i i hope he finds someone like that's going to be her his next victim you know mm. and he you know she wants like nothing to do with him so that's not the problem she's not hung up on him at all mm -hmm. yeah well yeah i like chad's idea the doge mm -hmm. the dojo yeah i mean yeah yeah i i think i think getting out there and just having patience you know I, I guess what you're saying is that she wants to know what a date will be like now like she hasn't gone on one so long that she's kind of like curious yeah i mean I, she could go out on some dates it sounds like she can get some dates and just see what it's like i mean a date is literally anything it's just two people spending time and attention with one another so yeah. i mean go to the grocery store and talk to the cashier long enough chalk that up as a date <laughs> yeah i i think it's uh maybe she needs to divorce herself from fear and expectation a little bit yeah and also yeah. it seems like she's she's you know gotten rid of this guy narcissist scumbag she's yeah. cut the she's cut the ties cut the rope Weak she's free man. now she should revel in this moment she's got freedom she has financial freedom she has she can fight anyone uh she <laughs> has uh 
dental freedom. You know, I can guarantee she has no cavities. And if she does... They think a lot of neurological conditions come from not flossing. Really? So her brain is probably clean her too. brain is yeah she's yeah no gingivitis and yeah, no. uh like she None should of us have it. is she masturbating uh, uh yeah okay we good all, like, I, older <laughs> sisters, we have a very strong sex drive even in our 40s nice uh, good yeah. oh okay so she's just look it sounds like she's got a real strong engine under the hood and she wants to make sure it's the right guy she lets pop it well you know She'll find that mechanic. Yeah. Sounds like some true American muscle. Yeah, he's going to have to know how to work a wrench. Yeah, this isn't an import we're talking about. This is a this is a uh, GTO classic. Oh, my God. She's gonna, she get I'm, turned I'm gonna on. I'm going to die laughing. <laughs> All right, well, good luck to her. Tell her to keep masturbating until she finds that guy. <laughs> okay. And Mom left. It's such an we honor to be with you. Mom, you. Yeah, you're the best. Aw, thank you. I really love supporting you, you two, too. Oh, we, we really appreciate yep. it. Yeah, y'all helped me through a really hard time in my life. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank I you. I appreciate it. For sure. Any, right. call, call anytime. Okay. <laughs> y'all take care. Have a good one. Wow, what a moment. Mom Lamb. Pretty powerful stuff. Uh, for her first appearance, it was amazing. Mom Lem, Mom Lem, always in the chat. You know we love you over here. Hell yeah! Ooh. Jake is always. Oh, yeah, Jake is always. That. Yeah, he it. I know, dude. Jake is always like, is Mom Lem going to be on? Yeah, because you know it's nice when I put a bunch of time and effort into something, and then someone like Mom Lem is like, this is amazing. Yeah, dude. It makes it makes you think. Hey, you know, all this time and effort is worth Mom Lem. You know. Dude, hell yeah. And I, I got to call out a, the chat. Someone had a hilarious thing where they, she should go from Taekwondo to Taekwondo Bone. <laughs> I think that was it. If you scroll up, it made me laugh. Oh, yeah. She needs to take that Taekwondo energy into Taekwondo Bone and energy. Shout out to Russ. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, is it, imagine if we didn't have boning. How, like, what would life be? If there wasn't sex? Yeah, but uh, not just sex, but just the jokes about it. You know, just being able to joke about wieners and stuff. It'd be tough. What else, brother? Uh, I've been surfing a little bit. Lola, uh, my dog, it got into my girlfriend's makeup before I came over here. So It's so annoying. We call the vet, and I'm like, hey, she just ate this like mineral-based thing. Should I worry... And they're like, oh, you could call poison control. It's a $95 charge. I'm like, why? They just kick the it's can. It's a scam. Everything's, everything's a scam. It is crazy how much everything costs. Yeah. And then like, like so like our boy, he's got to wear a helmet, you yeah. know? And it, 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 he, it scabbed his head up, even though they use like 9 million lasers to get it fitted properly. It still yeah. didn't fit properly, even yeah. after an adjustment. Yeah. I left it on too long. Although I was kind of following their instructions, but then they told me I didn't. He scabbed up a bit. They're all really nice people over there too. But then he has to get a brand new helmet. Yeah. And thankfully it's covered by insurance. But if it wasn't, it's like five grand. Here's the thing though. No helmet on the last couple of weeks. His head is naturally getting better. Right. That's a thing. That's the thing is like the medical is like they're like, it's almost like with vets, with pediatricians and stuff they're like you need to do this you need to do this to ensure but i'm like well what did we do for like centuries before it seems like most people turned out pretty okay like i i don't know i i guess you want to make sure that they develop well but it's like you know or even with with dogs the amount of vaccines they're like you need like the what about the flu and i'm like i'm like are, are you sure the dog needs like 10 vaccines i think dogs are doing just fine you know what I mean? I, I, I hear, yeah. I just, I just started disagreeing with myself halfway through. You disagreed with yourself? A little bit. Yeah. Well, because I guess for like the, the makeup thing, I'm like, he'll be fine. And then the, the helmet thing, I'm like, it's fine. But actually, I think most vaccines are probably good, right? The dog ones are kind of like, there's the core that you get. You get rabies and distempered parvo. You got to do those ones. The other ones, there's like a lot of adverse reactions. I, I met a dog the other day. That was blind because of the flu vaccine. 
the and I'm like, well, dogs get over it. They get like Bordetella, like oh, they have Bordetella, the the, the Bordetella vaccine. They're like, it's for one strain, but they usually all it's kennel cough. They usually always get kennel cough and they get over it. Right. It's so that feels over, a bit just, too prescriptive. It's just overkill. Wait, how do they know the dog went blind from the vaccine? Uh, I just met this lady on a walk, and she, her dog it was like the eyes were all fucked up, and she's like, um, the dog was completely fine, and then she's like, hey, I got the dog, I got the flu vaccine for this dog, and she had an adverse reaction. The eyes were all fucked, like it messed up her eyes, and she and she was they had to get an operation to like permanently blind the dog. Oh my god! So, and the vet was like, yeah, it was from. The vaccine. So, I don't know. Should we uh, take another call? Yeah. All right, yeah, let's keep it pushing. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, dude. How you doing? What's going on with you, man? Just chilling here with Chad, dude. Hi, dude. Hi. What up? I'm, uh, dude, I wanted to call you guys to get you guys, well, I guess two things. One is to tune you guys up to sumo wrestling. Ooh. Oh, yeah! Hell yeah! Sumo. Do you do sumo or you just watch it? Well, that's kind of part of it, right? So I've been watching it now for like two years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually a tournament going on in Japan right now. They happen every two months. Um, it's like a 15 day tournament. Freaking awesome! It's just every day, like 25, 30 matches. Huge dogs, 350 plus pounds, just wow. tackling each other. It's a great time. Sick. Um, so I've been watching it, love it, love the culture of it, love like everything about the tradition, the way they enter the ring, the way they bow, how they build the ring. It's all fascinating shit. And I want to do it, right? Mm-hmm. So I found out that there's the largest North American tournament that's hosted out in LA in May. Uh, that's an open tournament, so I can just roll up and just do it there. Just show up and compete in this tournament. But I'm kind of worried about getting my ass kicked because I've never done it before. Yeah, I mean, you're for sure going to get your ass kicked. You should 100% still do it. That's awesome. I want to do it. It's such a good idea. Like, but do you think, like, should I? I guess my concern is like, if I show up and get get my ass kicked. Kind of part of, I think part of the reason why I like it is the tradition and the culture of mm-hmm. it. Oh, you feel like you'll be disrespectful? And yeah, yeah. No. That's exactly it, right? Like, I almost want to, like, pay homage to it. But I feel like if I show up and just get, you know, pancaked, what does that do for the great event? <laughs> Are you Japanese? <laughs> no, no, not at all. You know what, dude? This reminds me, there was this TV show on MTV back in the early aughts called The Buried Life, where these guys would travel around and do things that were on their bucket list. And one of them was to compete in a crumping dance-off. And they were white guys, and crumping comes from a black tradition. And so they were so worried about seeming like they were making fun of it or being like, you know, shallow white dudes that they almost didn't do it. But then they're all good dancers for one, which helped. But two, they put their whole heart into it. And so every move you could feel their sincerity and you could feel their love for what they were mimicking. And I think you'll have the same thing. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel that. I think that makes sense. Are you trying to get in sumo shape? Kind of. I'm more so just doing the traditional sumo training techniques, Mm -hmm. which are you basically, you do the classic stomp, right? The one that everyone knows where you pick your leg up and stomp it and do like a body weight squat. Mm -hmm. You got like a hundred of those. And then they have this thing called tepo where you like slap a pole basically for like 30 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm kind of just doing that and just getting as like comfortable with the movements as I can. Uh, what, the good thing about American sumo is that there's weight classes, right? So, like, I don't need to worry about going against the 300-pound guy. It'll be a guy in my weight class. Um, what do you so weigh? Yeah, I guess I'm, like, 210. If you don't mind me asking. That's solid. You're mm. solid. Um, did you play okay. football? Do you have any background in, like, anything that's kind of uh, similar? I mean, I like to play basketball. I'm, like, a, I'm a big body in the paint when I play basketball, and that's kind of what I'm leaning into is, like, it's like boxing out, but in reverse. Right. It's boxing in. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Dude, I think you got to do this. And if it's in Los Angeles, I'm going to come. Yeah, dude, you got to do it. Hell yeah, dude. 
you have yeah, to you, do you it. guys you guys should you guys should come and also uh you should compete i think i think the open is technically like i wrote this long dissertation to the u.s sumo open to try to get like my entry and they were like uh yeah sure dude I, like who are you um but it seems fairly open you know what dude? Uh, I, I was a backup running back on my terrible high school football team but i was very good in pass pro mm. i think i, I kind of have a good skill set for it and i think uh if i put on 30 pounds i'd be in your class so maybe i'll start bulking <laughs> But dude, I honestly, I don't think you're going to be disrespectful. I think you know in your heart of hearts, you're not going to be disrespectful. You're just not a disrespectful dude. So to me, the only thing that's yeah. stopping you is fear of getting pancaked. And my friend, there's only honor in that. So go forth and fight until you can fight no longer. <laughs> and dude, getting pancaked feels good. It's real. Yeah. It's honest. I, I, I played hockey. Yeah. I would get pancaked <laughs> all the time. I was laughing every time. You got to go, man. Don't be dull and unheroic. Yeah. You got to go. And if you get pancaked, that's a great story. Like 20 years from now, you're yeah, like, oh, I got pancaked doing that. Wheelie Daddy says you'd be disrespecting the warrior in your heart if you don't do it. That's the only warrior you have to honor. I think, I think all that makes sense. It's just that I, I think it's the compounding effect of I would get pancake wearing a Mawashi, right? Wearing See, now you're but, starting to uh, piss me off. Now you're starting to piss me off because now I don't know if you really want it. Now I'm starting to think this is just something you like to talk about. Do you actually want right, to do it? I, look, 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 I definitely want to do it. I'm training. Now, now I'm getting pumped up. Now I'm going to start yelling back at you. And say yeah, I'm doing dude. It. yeah, let's go. Push me back with your words yeah. and tell me you are that sumo <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. Let's go. I'm fucking do it. Let's I, go. I'm absolutely fucking. I'm going to sign up right fucking now. Let's go. Send a photo of you in the WOMG. And send a photo of you signed up. <laughs> send us send us the thing that says, hey, you're officially in. Yeah. I will, dude. I'll send you guys the form today. And, and, and when I compete in two months, I'll send you guys the fucking video if you're not there to compete against me, JT. Hell. I will be there, brother. I might not compete, Hell. but I will be there. <laughs> I will compete. I will compete. Yeah, dude. Send, send it. Like, remind us. Send, send like, uh, I think you're in touch with Jake. Like, send us all the info. I'm going to compete. Yeah, yeah, JT, you have till April to sign up. Copy, copy. Well, dude, you just fired me up. You're the man. Sign up, dude. You got this. Yeah, and check out the Japanese sumo, man. Check out some of those highlights. Just type in Basho, B-A-S-H-O. You'll see some highlights of the most recent tournament. It's badass shit, man. I know you guys like all care about sports in different ways. JT, probably more for you. Uh, but the individual nature of it, Chad, like, I think you'll like that too. Hell yeah. These guys are bad fucking dudes and the ranks change all the time. And like how you reach certain statuses is sometimes like, uh, based on how much honor and class they have as opposed wow. to how successful they are. And it's wow. awesome, dude. so cool. That's all right, we're cool. Gonna, we're going to watch it right now, man. Thank you. Dig it. Dig, Dig it. All, all right, right, guys. Love you, man. Konnichiwa. I fucking love your shit, man. Keep it up. Super uh, surreal to be talking to you guys. So uh, keep it up. Good time. I saw you guys in New York when you were over here. Oh, hell, hell yeah. yeah. Deal. See you in the, what do they call it? The ring? Uh, the doyo. <laughs> it was way off. The soft J. I never knew. The doyo, yeah. Right. The doyo, dude. All right. Yeah, man. Thanks, dude. Later, brother. Can we watch some of this? Will you pull it up, Jake? Some basho sumo? Basho, basho. He's a good guy. He's going to do great. I think he might win. Look at that. He loved to see it. Long grip for Nishiki Fuji. Nishiki Fuji just waiting for you then to start his offense. Now Dude. Nishiki Fuji has a double inside Moro Zashi. Can he do anything with it? That's so Duden awesome. attacking with a double outside. Because they're not self-conscious the about the outfit at all. Dude getting set. He wants to go that fires forward. me up, dude. But Nishiki Fuji. Look at all that cake. Stopping Duden's charge. Dude, call me crazy, but I think getting pancaked time. at the tournament will be more fun for him. Will be more fun for him than winning. I think so too. I don't yeah. think he wants to dominate one of these guys. I think he respects them so much. He just wants to, you know, give them a chance to dominate him. Yeah. He'd love it even more. For sure. It's just a big trip. He's got to book a ticket and stuff. It's more of the logistics, I think, that's a pain. Once he gets there, he knows what to do. Um, I love big cake covered in oil. Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. What's the longest I've gone without jaying off? Six months. You've gone six months? Yeah. Without jaying off? Mm-hmm. When I was 24. When I first quit really? porn. Yeah. It might have been seven months, honestly. Were you boning? Yeah. For okay. the first time. But there, there okay. was a two-month stretch where there was nothing of anything. Hmm. Damn, I didn't know you. Damn. Yeah. How'd you feel? Uh, pretty good. There were some days that were really hard. 
Yeah. I would say there was maybe 10 days where you're like, I'm losing my mind. But for the most part, you kind of just go back to, you, you kind of return to your baseline. I, I had a lot of, I felt proud of myself. Like I remember one time I went out with a friend and I had told him I was going to do it. And I brought it up to him. I was like, dude, I still haven't jade off. He's like, I didn't bring it up because I thought you would have given in by now. Oh, I, was, nice. I was really proud of myself. That's like, awesome. No, I did it. Oh, someone asked, how was the first nut after the six months when I jade off? And it's funny. I do remember it. Yeah, it was really good. It was at my brother. It was right after my brother's graduation party in Notre Dame. I went back to my hotel room and I just slapped my dog and I was drunk and it was phenomenal. I remember when I took a month off, no porn either. And then I looked at porn after a month. It was like an explosion, like a sensual explosion. That's what you want. Make it count. Make it mean something. Just like a nice b-hole. I was writing down, my, I'm trying to do a bit about it. I was writing down my addictions the other day. I think my three main addictions are porn, my phone, and talking. Mm. Phone, phone's got me good, yeah. Yo, yo. What yo. up? What's going on, boys? Just freaking chilling, dude. Kicking it. How you living? Hell yeah. Uh, getting by as best as you can, you know. It sounds a little sad. What's going on? Uh, can we take a moment of silence, please, for like the next five seconds? For what? Uh, I just want to take a moment of silence for all the guys who have stepmoms and stepsisters out there. Uh, where's this going? Well, I personally have been a victim of this. Um, the over-sexualization of stepmoms and stepsisters is pretty prevalent in the adult film industry. Mm-hmm. And I had a good buddy of mine at the bar last week, just like a neighbor, but he's not a part of like my direct friend group. I haven't seen this guy in a while, but we saw each other from across the bar and I was like, yo, what's going on, bro? And whatever, drinks are flowing. And he asked if I ever thought about hitting my uh, stepmom up. Mm. And we're, I mean, we're both above the age of 21. And I told him, I said, she's been in my life since I was three, you know? Mm -hmm. That's my mother. And I was completely thrown back, dude. I, if I didn't know him and I wasn't in a crowded place, I might have resorted to violence. Mm. Because it's kind of one of those things where you feel like a dirty dog when you go onto those websites and you see the stepmom category. And I just feel bad because it's always that thing that's just hidden in the back of your head where it's like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, some of the most popular categories tend to be, don't even want to talk about it, but 18, stepmom, stepsister. Uh, I just think that's a little too much, and it's putting a burden on everyone with step parents or siblings. Well, what makes you with. come? Hmm. Uh, probably memories, for real. Oh, okay. So for you, it's mostly like hot women you've seen or hot women you've been with and you kind of just uh, have a little uh, nostalgia for it. it. I fell in love with that when I'd be out with no service and you got to do the deed. And I actually recently uh, lost my old phone uh, going snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of... Uh, good memories on there but it felt good to push that sailboat away forgive me for this question but it's coming from chat and i gotta ask did this guy's question at the bar touch a subconscious nerve i'm talking maybe a deep dark fantasy about. might have um i don't know it just didn't sit with me right because you know, growing up, I mean, shoot, porn has been in the life since iPods existed. I mean, I, I was part of the, I'm 22. I was part of the generation that was handed an iPhone and an iPod in middle school and of all those hormones and told to go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and, is... and, and so exploring these desires, I became disgusted at his remark mm -hmm. and was more threatened by the mindset of there are sharks out there. There are men. I mean, I feel like a shark sometimes. I go into the grocery store 
and I see a, a like aged couple having a great time, and I get taken back to, like I said, memories. And I just think that there's a lot of sharks out there, and that uh, right, you feel protective over your. This triggered something in you where now you realize that some of your friends are lusting after your stepmom. Well, like I said, this is just a neighbor that I knew he wasn't he wasn't a close friend. Um, I would never surround myself with friends like that. Mm. But I just think that it needs to be represented in the matter of uh, mal subconsciousness going on in younger aged males and even older aged males that have led to the. So you think uh, you think the you think the the prevalence of incest porn of stepmom stepsister taboo porn you think that's actually creating more of a desire for it you don't think maybe the 100%. desire for it is what's created the porn 100 I, I would say it's mutually also, reinforcing because taboo was the most popular porn in the 80s and that was about having sex with family members of different distinctions so I think it's always been there. I think that the, the thing about porn is whether it's that or the, the young thing or, or the cheating stuff, it's the taboo is what really gets us cranked up. And you're, you're going to have a hard time rooting that out of humanity. The taboo. That's what I was afraid to hear. Yeah. You, you can't, it's, it's in there for whatever reason, what's ever in our brain, there's something about when you cross those wires, the pop gets bigger and you, I don't think you're going to be able to root that out. So I think you just have to accept that life is one of chaos and that people are going to want to have sex with your stepmom. I'm sorry. Speaking of uh, chaos, JT, uh, now that you're a dad, uh, when's the last time you maybe fixed something on your car by yourself or changed your oil? Because that's going to that's gonna be something that you have to pick up when you're young and get a little bit older. This was a huge pivot, dude. Uh, you're coming after me. I, I I went to a Jiffy Lube and had the oil fixed about a week ago, and I tipped well. Fixed? Or, yeah. Uh, see, this is, this is terminology, man. That. Uh... <laughs> but 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 I have accrued resources that allow me to outsource those sort of jobs, so I can focus on other things. You were just talking about how much stuff money, how how much stuff costs nowadays with money, and that's something you could reduce the financial impact. Look, of. look, I am right. aspirational that way, and I do endeavor to do more of the stuff you're talking about. But I'm not going to have you come on here with your tone and put me in a box that's making me look like something you think isn't what I'm supposed to be, I brother. Put you in a box. I left that box pretty wide open with saying you still got time to. Uh, mend those mechanical malfunctions well, in your automobile let me ask you something did you bring this up because you have some kind of mechanic <laughs> fantasy where you're changing oil and then a lady comes along and changes your oil Dude, or is that taboo it was uh it was actually somebody's stepmom wow. and i was the shark so you like stepmoms Sometimes, sometimes I what? lift up the hood of my car and I tend to just reach around on all the parts to make my hands look dirty and then tell everybody about it the whole rest of the day about how I fixed my car. Wait a second. So is the reason you hate stepmom porn because when you watch stepmom mom porn, a part of you thinks maybe I'm watching this because I want to sleep with my stepmom? I think that's a very wild ride to, I think this is contributing to the main goal of what the clarification process on this topic would be is the constant. There's a word salad coming from you. You're, you're talking around things, but you're yeah. not talking straight. Yeah. You, so you complained okay, about stepmom, but now you're saying you like stepmom. I, I guess I would feel again, threatened by that because, because you want to hook up with stepmom. Where, Sorry. <laughs> where where I have watched it, but I felt dirty after. I can admit to that. Yeah, that's okay, man. Dude, you don't want to sleep with your stepmom. You're fine. No, I, that's, that's, that's why I feel threatened by that. But the only reason you would feel threatened is because you feel like you might. You don't need to feel I threatened because I, I don't think you do. Of joke, 
the jokes would be, I mean, if if she had been a stepmom for like a year or two, or like my dad's girlfriend, <laughs> I think that changes the dog. But she she's been in my life for as long as I can remember. Okay, so if you met a stepmom out in the wild and you were attracted to her, you wouldn't have any qualms with, you know, give her the old slap and tickle. I think I'd have to approach it a little bit more maturely, but uh, <laughs> I think that would be a wild ride. I, You know what else I think is going on here? I almost think that, like, the reason you're not into your stepmom is because you have so much respect for your bros that you're like, well, my dad got there first. Yeah, I definitely think uh, there's a lot worse uh, people that he could have picked out of the whole dating pool. Nice. All right. Well, that's just love for a maternal figure. All right, man. Well, it was good talking to you. Hey, I'm going to work on the car thing, man. Hey, it ain't, much, it ain't as much as a change in oil, but love you, boys. See y'all. Love you too, man. Weird guy. That was a lot of twists and turns. He was talking around things. He was like, I'm the morality. This is wrong. Yeah. And to, yeah, sometimes I put oil on my hands hoping a stepmom will come by yeah it was almost like was he more mad at the friend because he's like hey i'm the only one who's allowed to lust after my stepmom i don't know dude you know what it's not that weird everyone's like it, it feels weird because it's it's taboo but honestly i mean according to freud people are into their actual mom so being yeah. into your stepmom is even once removed from that you're fine dude everything's normal as you've all Harari said, nothing is unnatural. Because if yeah. it happens, it must be natural. Mm. What else do we got? We got options on these calls. Is there anybody in chat who wants to call? If so, text the hotline right now. Uh, 323-418-2019. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Gold Bond Brother, how you doing? Good, good. I'm feeling great. TGIF. <laughs> Did you? Oh, let's go. Did you bond today? No, unfortunately, I didn't. So you you do have an update, though. I do have an update. So last time we tried to call my one friend to convince him to bond, turns out he was a bondsman. I just haven't seen him in a while. Oh. And also turns out he's the he was the the first bondsman. Oh, so the friend that we left the message on kind of yeah. haranguing him for not bonding he actually came up with bonding yeah i have the i have the origin story now and it all makes sense honestly like of course so just before you it get into the origin like story a, all your friends are bonding oh oh all but one there's still one okay all right so go ahead happened at a church camp it was a pastor's idea go figure a pastor's idea yeah apparently like it happened like when he went to like church camp one summer like his pastor was like hey guys we, we all do this and like that's where we, we got it from so just to clarify for people who are listening for the first time a pastor told your friend at church camp that a way him and his friends related to each other was putting gold bond on their balls rubbing their balls and then shaking hands and he told the youngsters they should do this too i think so <laughs> Does that taint I don't your... Think, I think the shaking hands part was our idea, but the, the bond part was definitely like some pastor's idea in like 2003. Wait, so the pastor's idea was to put gold bond on your balls? Yeah. But that's normal. What if you have a rash? You might have yeah. just been... That's, that's for chafing. No, but they got in a circle. You know, they still did that part. It was still an event. I don't think the pastor's weird... Unless there's a handshake so? encouraged. They're making an event, though? Okay. In a circle? No, because that's like guy shit. When you're like a teenager, that's what you do in the locker room. How old were that they? That is true. Probably like early teenage years. I don't know. But I, the pastor's older. I know. I understand he's an adult yeah. man. But that's like, you know, my dad's friend's the one who told me how to like fruit bowl people. Like, right. You're just kind of having fun messing around i i think because he's a pastor we assume that there's like a creepy like sexual component to it but i'm not sure that's there just off what i'm hearing oh yeah i'm, I'm not here to call out the pastor like 20 years later i'm just saying that that's that's the origin story that i've been told 
And I'm 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 suspicious of you know all the priests I grew up with were creeps and molesters, so I I, I think that happens. Yeah. But this feels uh like no one got touched. Yeah, nobody got touched. So everyone the, just like yeah. So this <laughs> is the original bondsman, and but you thought he didn't bond. Yeah, it, it had been a while since he bonded with us, and I completely forgot that he, he used to do it. Right. Why? I don't know, and I feel kind of bad for it. Right. Well, it's maybe... like forgetting Michael Jordan won six championships. Yeah. So are you Scottie Pippen? Um, I, that's a pretty high honor. I don't know. Or Isaiah Thomas? Maybe Isaiah Thomas. Got to work on that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the update. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no no problem. Uh, you guys keep doing your thing. I was watching the live stream. That was awesome. Hell yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Well, keep bonding. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is a good guy. The way he talks about bonding is so funny. Like the tone of his voice is like, yeah, he's, he's, turns out he's a bondsman. Maybe bonding really does center you. And I think a lot of that stuff is big for camaraderie. Yeah. And when you're that open with your friends, that, that goes a long way. I yeah. might've just grown up in an inappropriate environment though, too. I remember so many conversations, not dissimilar to that with adults. Like we had a family friend who used to drive me around and he was like, I was like 12 and he was like, Hey man, if you ever have anal sex, like people say you need lube, but you can just like spit on your hand. Hmm. You were like 12 and someone told you that? Mm-hmm. Who told you that? A family friend. I mean, we had, we had a, and he was like one of many. Like, we had other family friends. Not, not all of them. Some of them were straight-laced, but a couple were like... My, my brother will know who I'm talking about when he hears this. We had one friend who was like a, a basketball coach. And uh, he would say wild, wild shit. Mm. Wild shit. But it, we enjoyed it. It felt like there was something about it where... I don't think I knew he was immature and it made me feel mature that he talked to me about those things. Right. Like I liked hanging out with them because I was like, Oh, he's unfiltered with me. And he talks to me like I'm one of his buddies. And I, I still think of him fondly. He was an awesome guy. But when I think back on it, I'm like, Oh, he was just, but it was weird that like he liked talking about that shit with me. Not because I think he got like a perverted kick out of it, but because I think he was like, Oh, they kind of think, look at things the same way I do. Mm. Like he was just kind of immature in his sense of humor. Like, did you ever have like a family friend, like I'm thinking of another family friend now who like, uh, before he went out to dinner with my parents, we were staying at his house and he was like, Hey, and when we're gone, you kids, uh, you know, don't get in any trouble. And then he threw a bunch of playboys on the ground for us. That's cool. I, I'm trying to think of like, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I had like a teacher one time who would talk about eating pussy a lot. That sounds like what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's like, well, he's our lacrosse coach. And he's like, man, that goal was eat, like eating pussy on a Saturday afternoon. And, or if he scored a goal, he'd be like, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm sporting a Woody off that goal. Which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> right. Like, I loved it. It's, he's probably my favorite teacher. Yeah. I hope he's still alive. I guess, and the part that I'm undervaluing is that the guy's a pastor. He's a man of God. Yeah. I, but it is like, the, like putting gold bond on your nuts is common practice. I guess the circle part got me. You're right, though. That is weird to be like, all right, boys, now we're all going to do it together. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, maybe it was because it didn't involve the handshake. And when I first thought of it, it was the handshake. So then when it got reduced to not handshake, I was like, it all together didn't feel that bad. I would just need some more details on how it went down. Like, did they pass the gold bond around? And he's like, good. Now, Timmy, gold bond. Yeah, see, I, I picture more sporty. Like, come on, fellas, we're going to put, who, who, we all got ball rashes. Come on, dab it up. And then. <laughs> yeah, that weirds me out, dude. I got to be Well, honest. I'm not doing, okay, let me try it again. Let me try it again. <laughs> yeah. Let me try it again. It's like, all right, fellas, get in a circle. Now, some of you may not have heard, but Mark has a rash on his balls. Yeah. Now, we don't all want to get a, how's that sound? <laughs> uh, 
Dude, it's still, it's still, it's still kind of tripping me up. All right, what if it's like all the kids are like, Mark's a loser, he's got ball rash, and then the pastor comes in and goes, why are you guys picking on Mark? And they're like, he's got a ball rash, sir. And then you go, hey, we all got ball rashes. You're no better than Mark. Throw me that gold bond. If you get a rash on your balls, kid, when you're on this trip, it's not a big deal. You just take care of it. You dab some on there, and everyone's like, ew, that's gross. And he's like, it's not gross. Everyone do it. That's it, dude. That's how, it, if it went down like that, I'm chill with it. Like a drill sergeant. Shut up, Tommy. You old... You couldn't do push-ups in a... In a bar... I, you couldn't do push-ups in zero gravity. In zero gravity, a big... Put some gold bond on your nuts and get back in line. Busy Aldrin. Do you guys... Are jerking off from me, women? How do you handle when you get caught? My girlfriend's so cool about it. I'll literally tell her I'm going to schwack one off and she laughs. And then, dude, she even found something I cleaned up some of my jizz with, and I was embarrassed. And she was like, I can't believe you're embarrassed about that. Of all the things you could be embarrassed of. <laughs> yeah, she'll, my old aunt, she'll be like, she'll be like, did you jack off recently? I'm like, yes. I'm a little bit more timid about it, but we do talk about it. Um, all right, should we do one? Do we have any one more, or are we good? Yeah, I, I got to pick up my mom in like, so it's 11 minutes there. I so don't have any more calls at the moment but um i do have a funny video if you guys haven't seen this yet yeah pull it quick, up quick reaction to it and then we can end jesus christ and i just broke into the pizza hut i broke the window and i'm here jesus is here now he's back he's back to earth all right and uh so you don't work there no i just broke in had a pizza i'm jesus and what was your name again <laughs> my name is jesus What's your last name, Jesus? Christ. <laughs> okay. And what do you look like? I look like Jesus. What else do I supposed to look like? <laughs> Why, why'd you do that? Because I'm Jesus. I can do whatever I want. We're uh, tired of Judas is on this earth. We're going to clean this earth up. So what are you up to? Man, where do you live at? I don't. I'm from heaven. <laughs> How'd you get over over to the Pizza Hut? I'm from heaven, sir. Okay. And did you break a front window? Yeah, I broke the door window, sir. And did you eat a pizza? Yeah. Had a Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. That was amazing. He's a great guy. Jeez. I like how calm he was when they asked him for his name again. He's like, Jesus. Kind of sounded like how Jesus would be when that happened. Yeah, I like how when you said, what's your last name? Christ. <laughs> yeah, I think Jesus, he'd come back and be like, I need some pizza. That sounds good. People are asking how I feel about Russ Wilson going to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I have to tell you, when I first heard, I was not happy. I was bummed. I lacked joy. Um, but then I quickly talked myself into it. I think we got a good shot at going from 9-8 and eight to 10-7. and seven. Mm. <laughs> How do you feel? How the Niners doing? Uh, dude, I think they're good. <laughs> I heard Brock Purdy uh, got married. Yeah, he got married. Yeah, good for him. Uh, Aaron Donald retired. I saw that. Are you tripping out on the Kate Middleton thing? Dude, I think she might be dead. Really? No. Yeah, dude. I think she's dead. That's crazy. It's weird. It's, it gets weirder and weirder. She had an abdominal surgery? What is that? I don't know. I don't know why it would knock you out of commission for so long. But I'm, I'm not too familiar with surgeries in that area. I mean, it's so weird because it's like the photograph was... She posted a photo recently, but it was proven to be Photoshopped. Now it's on like Instagram saying it's been doctored and edited. And she apologized for that, right? Yeah, but people haven't like seen her. And on top of that, there's a photo of William and quote unquote Middleton, right? In the car. Got them in the car. She's looking away. People are like, that's not her. This has become more commonplace, right? To believe that people have been replicated or cloned or that there's some kind of like robot version of them. Yeah. And here's the thing. I don't understand this, but her senior staff didn't know about the abdominal surgery. Interesting. But what is abdominal surgery? Uh a hernia? 
you have to recover for three months from that? Definitely not. She maybe she has cancer. Doesn't want people to know. That's probably it. That would be horrible. Um, I think they're winding up their they're winding up their marriage, which is why she's been out of the spotlight. Have you done a hot goss on it? I think next week. Yeah, I think you got to appendicitis. I I think oh, appendicitis is pretty common. Dude, I have a beef of the week. I, contrarianism has just gone. I, I'm a big contrarian. I'm annoying as shit with about it, but it's just gone too universal. Like the degree to which people think they see what's actually going on underneath, like the obvious reality is just driving me nuts. Yeah. And like, the, this is a very small way it happens, but like, dude, with like UFC fights, no matter who wins, if the judges pick who wins, people now just automatically would be like, no, the other guy won. The judges were bad. Hmm. And, but it will be so obvious that there's nothing going on, that it wasn't rigged, that one guy just kicked the other guy's ass. And people be like, no, it was rigged, the other guy won. Mm. And it, I don't, I, I just, I, it's my fault. I shouldn't read the comments, I shouldn't get inflamed by it. But to me, it's like the ultimate representation of like how we just need to trust our eyeballs more. Mm. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it, there's, it does, uh, like we are in, Dave Chappelle called it the age of spin. It's like, uh, you don't even know what's real anymore. Yeah, people just go so crazy though, being like, uh, "You believe that? You believe that?" Right. I'm like, maybe I don't, but I don't. I'm not so sure that it's not that. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not convinced that like I'm seeing the real truth underneath what's being shown to me. Yeah, that's something where I'm just, I, I'm just kind of like, I don't know what's going on, and I'm, I'm kind of content with that. I think that's way better. I just don't know. Because I think for someone to claim that they do know what's going on, that's, I don't think they do. No. And, and look, if someone's even going to tell me they think they know what's going on, you better present it very convincingly. There's just a lot of like really not convincing people. I mean, like people when I'm like, how, how could you possibly believe that you're the person who sees what's going on in, yeah. in the world? And they're like, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. When people are certain about it, you're like, shut up. I know. You don't know. No one should be certain about anything. No. I know what's going on, but... Jake, don't even start with me. <laughs> uh, Dude, I was just going to say... You might, you I was might just say, not know, but you might not know in a convincing way. Uh, Chad, do you have a beef, Baber legend? Some people have been asking for it to come back. Maybe you could throw one out, too. Um... That one if you want me to go yeah uh, my, I, yeah go ahead <laughs> sorry i gotta run in like four minutes uh, okay my baby of the week is strider wilson he's gonna yeah. oh is that who yours was no that's we uh, all should have been saying this yeah because he's got a special that he's recording april 1st uh april fool's day and jt what are the details so april 1st it's going to be at paperback brewing in atwater village we're doing two shows we got to sell some tickets for it. you guys want to come out it's going to be spectacular we got a good team around him chad's going to be opening it up i'm going to be in video village making sure the cameras are in place and we're all going to sit back and watch one of the most talented hilarious performers that any of us have ever met just go to work and do what he's best at so come on out laugh hard and feel connected to him in his special moment Dude, I was watching him last night. He's dialed. He's dialed, and the the, dialed. The, the, the 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 having the special in place is making his brain go extra hard. Yeah, and all the jokes are just getting bigger and better and funnier. And he's just like, and they were already great. And yeah. it, but now it's like you're watching a guy get prepped for his like hundred meter sprint, and yeah. he's looking like Usain Bolt out there. Yeah. So if you when you see the flyer in the next couple of days, if you guys share it on your page, that would be awesome. You know, every, all the Stokers show Strider some love. Hell yeah. Yeah, the flyer should be coming out momentarily and then there'll be a ticket link. And, and if you're into your stepmom, it's okay. I think that's good to end on that, that message. Thank you. If you're, in, if you're into your stepmom, it's okay. Thank you guys for tuning into the live. Uh, guys, if you're listening to this, the recording of this, go to Chad and, J, Chad and JT Go Deep on Twitch. Give it a follow. We're going to start doing these lives. Um, and we want to hear from you and we love you guys. And thank you to everyone who tuned in today. Love you guys. If you need advice, these guys are